Welcome to Jason's Electronics Repair. This is my ER, and this is Quick Tips to Fix Your Switch. Starting off with tip number one. You can check to see if you have an unpatched or patched switch by searching the serial number on the bottom on ismypatchedswitch.com. But there's also a tip if it says it's possibly patched, you can search the back cover if it's the original back cover. And there is a little date code stamped in the back of the um, of the unit. Let's take a look at that under the scope, and you can see the date code here. All right. So if we look here, we can see that this is 27 of 1. So, and then we have a 7. So, could be 2020. This is the year 2020 right there. And it's the 7th month, um, the first 17th. So, this was made on 2020, 2020 on the seventh month on the 17th so you can check that and um, you can look at that for possible date codes tip number two involves using a switchboard if you need to test to see if it docked without putting it all in the housing and everything you can hook up a test battery to it the power cable or you can hook the test battery up to it and get one of these adapters that plugs into a dock and then you can hook your test battery up and plug this in and you can see if the unit docks so you know if the board is working and then you know if you have an LCD issue or a screen issue or any form of issues like that. So that is a pro tip you can use. You can um, expand a cable from your dock with one of these little adapters. You can also get uh, USB-C cables. Um, and you need a Thunderbolt cable. It's not a standard USB-C cable. You need a Thunderbolt cable, but that is a good, um, good way of doing it. Tip number three, you can use a breakout cable from making it from a battery to hook to a power supply so you can see the current draw that the switch is using from the battery. These cables are very simple to make. You cut open the battery, you pull out the battery board, you solder the positive and negative where the battery would connect to the board and then you have a breakout cable for your Nintendo Switch. And then you can either power it with this, plugging it in and then running the power to it and pressing the power button by hooking that up or you can insert the charger, wait five or six seconds and it will then boot the Switch. So tip number three. Tip number four, if you have no power or low uh, charge current, it could most likely be related to this M92 chip. You should uh, make sure there's no obstructions in the port and then check these capacitors around M92 for shorts to ground. If you have short on this line, this line, this line, or this line, you're going to have a shorted M92 chip. Um, also check these. One side is ground, one side is the, the, the signal line. And then also this cap down here goes directly to the CPU. You want to make sure you don't have a short right here. Then it's most likely a CPU issue. The two caps over here related to P13. So, you know, keep that in mind. P13 is on the back. And that will be in a, another tip. Tip number five is the video chip. This is the PI3 USB chip. Um, it, is a, it looks upside down, but that is the direction it goes in. This is your video output chip for the Nintendo Switch. This is going to be your docking functions and a lot of the other things. You want to make sure that this chip is good. You can check this capacitor or the capacitors around M92 that I showed in the previous tip. You can also, um, you also need to check these filters to make sure they have continuity between these two sections no cross continuity and none of them are shorted to ground. Um, these capacitors rarely fail, so you want to keep that in mind as um, you are dealing with video related issues. Tip number six is gonna be related to the battery management system on the Nintendo Switch, that is this BQ24193 chip. 
You want to make sure, again, you don't have any shorts to ground, and you want to make sure everything is good to go. You need to be careful when changing this chip because there's normally a plastic connector in this area for your Joy-Con rail. And you want to make sure that um, you don't melt that. So a little, a little heat shield, like I use these little heat shield tacos, like so, to um, insulate the, the board. So it insulates it. Uh, I took that off for a different reason. But um, check that. You want to check your caps around there and make sure none are shorted to ground. Also, you want to check to make sure you have continuity to this coil. This is normally generally related to battery charging issues. Like if your switch doesn't want to charge or it doesn't draw any current through the battery, it could be BQ related. On a side bonus part of tip six, this is the fuel gauge chip. This tells the battery this tells the switch how much juice the battery has. So if you're stuck at 1% or it's charging but the percent's not going up, or thing or it it's low and it doesn't realize the battery's full and it won't turn on. That would be your fuel gauge chip here. This is a Max 17050. You can replace those and you can purchase them. For tip number seven, we are going to jump up here to near the LCD connector. And we're going to take a look at this little chip right here. This is your LCD driver. It can cause no display. So if your switch is docking and um, you check it with the docking cable and it seems to dock but you still have no output display and your lcd is good there's a good chance that your lcd driver is bad they can be replaced you can purchase those on aliexpress but before you go changing your lcd driver make sure your connector is good to go and you have no bent pens causing any issues so check your connector check to see if it's docking if it's doing all those things it could possibly be this lcd driver for tip number eight, we are going to need to remove the NAND from the board. I'm going to remove that there like so. And we're going to take a look at this glass chip under there like so. This is the Wi-Fi IC. And if you are having an orange screen of death, there is a highly likely that this is um, damaged. And you can change these and replace these. Um, you can check the caps around here for shorts. I have had them work in shorts around here and it would intermittently go to orange screen of death. So um, this is your Wi-Fi IC. It's under the NAND in the shield. So um, keep an eye out for that for orange screen of death. Um, do be careful when changing this chip because it is very easy to melt this, um, this connector. Let me go and zoom out a little bit there. It's very easy to melt the LCD connector. So be careful changing this chip. I would shield this um, very well, and um, you should be fine. Tip number nine has to do with the CPU and the blue screen of death. So if your switch has a blue screen of death, there's a good chance that the CPU has some cracked balls on it underneath there. This is a ball grid array, a BGA chip, and there are little tiny solder balls under here and they can be cracked, come cracked and not connected any longer. So there's a couple different options. You can reflow this chip with a hot air station. I recommend a quick or an end station or a BGA machine to rework a CPU like this, but it is possible to do with one of those devices. You can um, look, slowly heat this up and then um, add some flux and slightly nudge the chip so it moves. All the solder becomes molten, and then you have the um, refo complete, and that, um, I would say, 7 times out of 10 will fix the switch. If it still does not fix, the CPU needs to be lifted and checked for pad damage or any kind of trace damage underneath the CPU. And then you can reball the CPU. I recommend a stencil. You can do it by hand. But, and then you reflow the CPU back on, and you should be solved um, pretty good. Um, I've had uh, 10 blue screens of death, seven reflows worked, um, two needed a reball, and one I didn't fix. So, you know, th there's a good chance you can, um, you can replace that. I have dealt with some other blue screens of death before I conducted experiments that um, ended up in no fix due to damage to the board. Um, traces need to be repaired, and that is very difficult, but it is possible. Number 10 is less of a tip and more of an opinion of mine. I feel that if you want to tackle um, fixing a Nintendo Switch, then you should be feel free to do that if you have the proper equipment. Um, you need to 
take your time and don't try to rush it. If you, if you rush, you're going to make mistakes and always check your work. Don't swap a chip out, assume the chip was perfect and the issue is somewhere else. If you change something on it and it's persisting with the same exact issue it had before, it could very well be that you improperly installed or installed the chip or the port incorrectly. Um, always don't be afraid to second guess yourself and um, check your work. Checking your work is very important. Um, that's going to do it for the quick tips to fix your switch. Um, I just want to give a big shout out to Freddy the Teddy for holding my numbers, for labeling these all correctly. He has done a fantastic job. He will not be returned. And I would like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, subscribe. It does help out a lot. And let me know in the comments if you liked this type of video and all that good stuff. Thank you very much and have a fantastic day.